how did you find out uh, vulnerability was attractive? So when and how did I find out it, that vulnerability was attractive? Oh, when and how did I realize vulnerability was attractive? Okay, that's a, that's a really good question and it's a really good story. There was a guy named Sean, who was a friend of mine. He was actually a dating coach for Pickup 101. Hey Sean, how you doing buddy? I had broken up with this girl. I alluded to her earlier, the violin player. And um, we ended it, it went ended terribly. And about eight months, a year, I don't know, some, a certain period of time had gone by. And I had a chance to see her and there was a lot of tension between us. And she was playing at the uh, local pub by my house and I was getting ready to move away. And there was a story in my mind I was really insecure at the time. I was working on all this stuff. I was learning it. I was pushing my boundaries. I had spent the last eight months a year working on myself and uh, really tried to change who I was being from that moment. I had decided that from the heartbreak I got from her, the worst heartbreak I'd ever been through, that I wasn't gonna go through that again. And so I started working on myself like crazy. I took workshops, seminars, training. And now it had been like eight months a year later and I'm gonna see her again. I haven't seen her in a while. Now my heart's pounding and I'm nervous and I'm getting ready to move away. I don't know if I'll ever see her again after that. And I'm thinking to myself, this is my one chance to really connect with this woman, to really get to know her again. Because I, I honestly, I, I really liked her and it was, it was driving me nuts. So I went to Sean and I said, look, this is the situation. I don't know what to do. He gave me some really simple advice. He said, basically, you get vulnerable with her. You tell her exactly what you feel. And then if she rejects you or doesn't receive it well, she's not worth it, you walk away. And I thought, that's a horrible idea. I've done that before, I've got up to women, I told them that, I've shared before, and I get utterly rejected. They, they don't respond. And he goes, that's because you did it wrong. And I said, well, what's the difference? What do you mean by that? And he goes, you went up needy, begging for their validation, saying we can fix it, right? We can work on this. And I was like, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, and I said, yeah. Yeah, basically that's what happened. And he said, uh, well, that's the wrong way to do it. He says, what you gotta do is you tell him exactly how you feel, looking for nothing in return and being totally okay with it, completely open and vulnerable. And then you just shut up and you see what they do. And I was like, that just sounds terrifying, first of all. And it doesn't sound like it's gonna work. So I figured, what the hell, I'm gonna give it a shot. I went to the pub, she was playing. She was closing out her set. And I walked up and said, uh, hey, uh, I really want to talk to you. And she went, okay, okay. And she's closing up her violin after I get up with my violin. And then started to walk outside and she was walking really fast. And I was getting rejected. I could feel, I could feel that she was trying to pull away from me. She's walking to her car. So I'm walking with her and I'm saying, no, no, I seriously want to talk about something. And she goes, okay, okay. And she gets in her car, starts the car, she's getting ready to start the car, puts her violin away. And then I go, no, I really need to tell you something. And finally she goes, she turns the car off, turns, looks me right in the eyes, like this, and goes, what? And I go, oh, now I got her attention. So now it's on. So then I looked at her and I said, look, um, I'm moving away soon. I don't know if I'm ever gonna see you again. So I really wanna say something before I leave. And it's okay if you don't agree or you don't even respond. But I just wanna, I just really wanna say this at least once before I leave. And I said, basically, I really care about you. I miss you. I wanna work it out. I wanna work on this with you. And if you don't feel the same way, that's okay. But again, I'm not walking away from here without looking at you at least once and saying this. And then I just shut up and sat back in my spine and looked at her. And I watched her look at me and boom, something opened up. She goes, come here. And we got out, sat on the curb behind her car. And for the next 45 minutes, had a deep talk about the whole relationship, everything we felt, where we were at. And she was suddenly, and no, earlier she was in a hurry to get home. Suddenly she was not in a hurry to get home. It was one of the most puzzling and beautiful, intimate moments of my life. We really just bubbled up right there and connected. And I realized in that moment, how powerful vulnerability and authenticity is. Because it, what it did, I had to really think about it. Before I did that moment, I thought just being vulnerable, in my mind, I guess vulnerable, needy, and vulnerable, strong were the same. And in the past, what I had done is I'd gone up and said, hey, you know, I really wanna work on this. Come on, let's work on this. You know, I miss you. How can we make this work? I was pleading and begging. This time there was no begging, no pleading energy. 
before I did that, they almost felt the same. When I did that, the power of that, that juxtaposition blew my mind. I can see it clearly after that. I can see the power it had. Because honestly, opening my heart and being real and then standing in it and saying, I can handle whatever you throw at me, but this is the truth of what I feel. What are you gonna do with it? I'll deal with it, even if it hurts, is true confidence. That's when I realized what true confidence was. And to me, it was still a, a very defining moment in my growth, who I became in the future, and the fearless man, and what the fearless man has become. And so, 